So following on from the previous video, this version of the code has a few other functions added. So it's the same basic code as in the previous video. I just wanted to separate this part off because it contains uh, sort of specific examples of the typical functions you write to iterate over lists. It'll be a pretty quick one. So uh, right after the code we had that added elements to our list, this one now has um, uh, this extra testing code to call a function to count the elements in the list, get the size of the list, to add up the elements in the list. Some extra test cases for delete first, uh, and then at the end it calls a function delete all, and we'll see, you know, delete all turns out to be pretty easy to write. Um, there's also this, delete last, and that I will leave to you if you want a character building exercise. That would be significantly more difficult than anything you'd normally expect to see in CSC 111. But if you can do it, if you can muddle through and get delete last to work, that means you are definitely on track for the final exam, and frankly you are on track for the first midterm of the next programming course. Um, okay, so uh, let's start by writing these functions here. I'm actually going to go in a strange order. I'm going to start with delete all. So here's delete first. I've added in that error checking that I mentioned in the previous video. Um, I want I give you a linked list and I say please delete every single element. It turns out this is actually a pretty easy one. So we already saw the trick behind this. Um, what I'll do is I'll just delete the first element until um, the list is empty. We know the list is empty because its head pointer is null. So I'll just call delete first and I will hand over L. Notice that in this context L is a linked list star and so uh, I, I just hand it over. There's no need for an ampersand like you might have seen in the code from the previous video. Okay, so that's delete all. Well, that was pretty easy. Uh, and now we have to write these two functions. So some elements. Now what I want to do here, this is no different really than the loop I would use to add up the elements of an array. The thing I need to do differently is I need to find a way of iterating over a linked list instead. Now we've done that. We've printed out the elements of a list by iterating over it. Um, so I'm going to create a variable for my sum and then eventually return that. And down here, same story. If I want to count the elements in the list, well I guess what I want to do is I want to create a variable for my count, and it'll start at zero, and then I want to return it. Okay, and I'm going to start with count elements because maybe it's obvious that's sort of the easier of the two. So uh, I'll draw myself a sketch of a linked list. And I'm going to do the same thing I've done in these other loops that I've used. I'm going to create a pointer that keeps track of where I am in the list. And I'm going to call that current node. And that will start at the head pointer. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to keep walking until my, my current node pointer points to nothing. That is, I'm off the end of the list. So as long as there is a node at the other end of my pointer, I want to keep going. So while current node is not equal to null, and I will observe that you will notice if you look at people's, other, people's linked list code in C, they often just write this, while current node. And I, I've mentioned before, there is something strangely elegant about this. It's a bit of an acquired taste, but it is sort of nice to be able to phrase the pointer as if it's the question, as opposed to having to compare it to null. We won't do that. There's only so much we can put up with. Uh, and so, well, current node equals null, and I'm actually going to add my incrementation condition right now. When I'm done with the node, I'm going to say current node equals current node arrow next. All right. So while current node is not equal to null, well, what that means is I have a node to work with. I don't really need it to do anything with that node besides remember that it exists by counting. And that's it. I just add one to my count. So uh, let's try that. Um, I think we can try that without having to do it too much else. So this warning is never going to go away because I'm not going to write delete last in this video. Um, in list part two. Okay. L2 contains 10 elements. That is That makes sense. The square is of zero up to nine. L1 contains five elements. Okay, great. But before I go further, uh, maybe it's pretty clear what I do for the sum case. I'm going to put this uh, in comments, and I'm going to make an observation, which is that, hey, wait a minute. So for the loop, the initialization is this. Make a, a new variable, set it to something. The incrementation is this. Current node equals current node arrow next. And the loop continuation condition is this. So you know, those look awfully similar to what the three things I would need in a for loop. Node star current node equals L arrow head. And I keep going while current node is not equal to null. And at each step I say current node equals current node arrow next. 
And then I end up with this wonderful for loop that just has, uh, it's got a pretty ugly looking first line, but it's, its loop body is actually quite nice and elegant. So we'll try that out too before we keep going. And uh, it looks like that works too. All right. And there are these test cases for delete first that I guess I forgot to fold into my previous video, but there they are. You can take a look at them in the code that I post. So I have this nice, convenient, compact loop for iterating over a list. I'm just going to go and drop this right in. And at each step, what I want to do in this version is I want to add up the values of each element, uh, each, uh, the element inside each node of the list. So I say sum equals sum plus the value stored in the current node. We'll save that and we'll run it. And uh, we now have to try and verify this. So let's see, what is the sum? Okay, what's the sum of all this stuff? Well, 17 plus 10 plus six, don't trust me. Years of experience tell me this does equal 33. Plus 100 plus 200 gives me 333. And I'll leave it as an exercise to the viewer to verify that the sum of all this stuff is in fact 285. And so there are some examples of how we would write functions that need to iterate over a linked list to work with it. And if you think about it, anything you can do by iterating over an array, you can now do with a linked list using a loop that's been set up uh, like this. We'll clear the diagram. Um, and it's true that every data structure has its pros and cons, and certainly it's a bit more labor intensive to iterate over a linked list, but in exchange, you get that complete flexibility of structure where you can add new nodes wherever you want, and you can add as many as you want, and there's no inherent limit on the size of the list.